title of my message for today is Take It By Force. Mm -hmm. Take It By Force. And there's a, a special scripture that we can read in the book of Matthew. And it's Matthew 11, 12, where Jesus said, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Force. Right. Now, this has been uh, interpreted in different ways, and we can see it on a negative way and on a positive way. The negative way, it's uh, uh, um, uh, 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 some thoughts that people have that Jesus was saying that this referred to the violence that was being done against John the Baptist, against those that preached the Word of God. But as we read what the Jesus was mentioning, we also can see that spiritual truth is for bold people that are committed and decided to take it. And, and so this is my message today. How to take uh, God's promises by force. And when I say by force, it's not, it, we don't take them from God by force, but we take it from circumstances and we take it by faith and we need to apply ourselves. Now we know that uh, in the Word of God, we have one commandment that's above all, which is to love our God with all of our strength, with all of our being, with all of our soul. So do you love God like that? Yes. Because most people, they say they do, but they don't. Mm -hmm. You see, I, I like uh, 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 Kentucky Fried Chicken, but I, uh, I don't love Kentucky Fried Chicken. Now I, I love a good steak, I, I just love it. But I'm not willing to die for a steak. But I love God and I'm willing to die for the Lord and to give my life for the Lord. So we're talking about the things we love. And when you love, you do anything. You do anything. When you love a person, you do anything for that person. You're willing to sacrifice yourself. You know, my, I was talking to my wife yesterday and she was telling me I could give my life for you. And that's great, eh? <laughs> Come on, ladies, you need to do, tell that to your husbands. <laughs> All right. Now, let me talk about the forceful nature of God's kingdom. Uh, Christ taught the disciples that the kingdom of heaven had become militant since the days of John the Baptist. So he's not talking before John the Baptist. He's talking after John the Baptist. You know, John the Baptist is the last prophet of the Old Testament. Well, not coming with Jesus. So I'm putting Jesus on a different category. And, and Jesus said he was the greatest prophet. And, and the Bible uh, teaches us the forceful nature of the kingdom. You know, faith can be defined as pre pressing to the promises of God. So if we have faith, we need to obtain the things we pray for. And, and we need to use a certain level of violence. It's not that we pray and then we wait and see, to see what's happened. It's not that when we do something for the, for the Lord, we start and then we say, oh, let's see what happens. No, we receive it by force. We know that we know that we know that whatever we ask in prayer, we receive. Right. So we were taking some uh, prayer requests to the Lord. And I believe we get them. Amen. I believe we receive them. Amen. When we take them to the Lord, we take it. And then we say, I stand in the promises of God. And I will not move until I receive these promises. Now, some people have an attitude of defeat. But as Christians, we need to have an attitude of victory. The violent take it by force. So we need to learn how to force our way in. We need to force our way in into the promises of God. We cannot just, you know, do petty prayers and say, Oh Lord, if it is your will. No, we receive it by force. We receive it by force. Those people on the cancer list, that cancer list is way too long. But you know, the hospital cancer list is even longer than ours. So, so praise God for the people that are on the long cancer list. And we keep praying. And as we pray for them individually, we need to possess those promises by force. Now, in Luke chapter 16, in verse 16, Jesus said that the law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached and every man pressed into it. Every man pressed into it. Have you ever pressed into a place? Have you ever went to a show or to a, a, a stadium where you're going to attend to a, 
a, a sports event or something and you need to press your way in because there's a huge crowd and you're over there and you press your way in or you go to Montreal and you, you ride the metro at rush hour and when, the, when the, the train comes you need to press your way in otherwise you'll stay there on the platform you need to press your way in And I, I've been in, in, uh, in metros uh, 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 in the world, never happened to me in Montreal, where it, literally I had my feet up in the air because <laughs> we were like sardines in a can. Everybody pressed their way in. When you go to the hospital somewhere uh, and everybody's waiting for the elevator and you want to press your way in and when everybody thinks, no, it's full, you say, no, 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 there's still room for one more and you press your way in because in certain circumstances of life, if you don't press your way in, you stay behind. Right. Let me tell you that the philosophy of God's kingdom requires that we press our way in. Right. And then in life, as we walk with Christ, there's disappointments, there's things we don't like, we're disappointed with people, we can be disappointed even with church, we're disappointed with spiritual life, we're disappointed with pastors, we're disappointed with so many things in God's kingdom, sometimes even disappointed with God. Because we don't understand everything that's going on. But let me tell you, if you want to be a part of the kingdom, you need to press your way in. You need, Christ taught his disciples that the kingdom of heaven had become militant since the days of John the Baptist. And guess what? He never said that that season was over. That's right. We're still in that season. We need to declare that the kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is here and it is now. And we possess the realities of God's kingdom. You will not receive anything from God by accident. That's right. Amen. Certain people have this idea, oh, God will, will drop a blessing on me. And, and I like all those songs, you know, uh, that we, uh, showers of blessing and all these things. And it's like, you know, there's a shower and you just, uh, you know, you just receive everything. You say, yes, Lord, drop these things. And, and, and then we're confused when the Bible says that we should bring our tithes to the treasure house. And the, and the Lord will open up the windows of heaven and we just, we just say, where's the window? Where's the window? You know, find that window. Find that window. Amen. You know, that there's not a, a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. But there's a pot of blessing at the end of your spiritual life when you can receive from the Lord every promise. And prayer is based... Give that applause to the Lord. Amen. And prayer... Hallelujah is based on this principle of violence. It's not that we're violent uh, with one another. We're not violent people. It's, it's not that we're violent in, in, uh, and we just argue our way through uh, with, with people that are, have not the same faith as we do, we do. But we need to have a certain degree of violence if we're to receive uh, you know, the things of God. On the next verse, he said, The law and the prophets were until John, John the Baptist, Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached and every man pressed into it. And um, uh, Jesus uh, uh, was teaching these principles. Now, let me talk a little bit about spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare, it's a, a, a different level of prayer. That's right. See, we can do prayers where, uh, you know, beautifully built prayers. And I do those prayers. And uh, uh, depending on the circumstances in which we are, You know, uh, we do these prayers. Some, some prayers are even uh, not meant to be heard by God, but by people. Uh, you know, there's prayers of information. Uh, it, it, when people said, Lord, you know, I went to this place. Of course the Lord knows you went to that place. You know, come on. Oh, and Lord, you know, I talked to this lady. And you know, Lord, that uh, she has this problem. Yes, the Lord knows. So you, when you're doing this prayer, you're doing this prayer... Well, you can pray to the Lord, but you're doing a prayer of information. Yeah. And some people give even more information than what they should when they pray. <laughs> and then everybody at the end of the prayer, what? Yeah. You know, what did you say? <laughs> so, so there's different kinds of prayers. Mm -hmm. There's a very specific prayer, which is called the prayer of warfare. Yes. Yeah. This is the prayer you need to do when you're in trouble. Yes. And sometimes spiritual warfare is just a cry for help. Mm -hmm. Just when you say, Lord... Help me, son of David, have mercy on me. 
That's the cry for help. But you need to be bold. And you need to use a certain level of violence in order to force your way in. I have a few scriptures today, that's why I'm using, you know, the, the projection, because I, I, I don't want to uh, wait for you to open the, the Bible. Can you read it well from there? Yeah. Now Luke 11, 5 to 10. We're going to read uh, five verses. So, he says, And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. Verse 7. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed, and I cannot rise to give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because uh, he is his friend, yet because of his in, um, importunity, he will rise and give him, give him as many as he need. And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Mm -hmm. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that ask, receive, mm -hmm. and uh, that seek, find, and to him that knock, it shall be opened. Amen. This is the old King James Version. Mm -hmm. All right, but uh, here's the principle. Here's the principle. Jesus had to explain this uh, in a very peculiar situation, a situation that we could understand. There's this baker, and the bakery is closed, but he lives on the store on top of the bakery. And there's his friend of his, probably a customer or a, a relative, someone that he knows that goes there and says, give me bread. Now, uh, if, if you have a job, you don't want to be bothered with job, uh, with your work uh, after, you know, the, your schedule. Okay, so uh, some of you work uh, uh, for companies and uh, you, you leave at 5 o'clock and some, uh, the boss calls at 6 o'clock and you say, tomorrow, tomorrow. Tomorrow. I'm done today. I'm done for today. Here's the situation. It's night. He's asleep. And this fellow has the nerve to knock at the door, wakes him up. You know, he's already asleep. Wakes him up. The children are asleep. And he wants three loaves of bread. Come on. Come tomorrow. I've had enough. But because he continues to say, no, I want it now, I want it now, I want the bread, I want it now, I have people there, I need to feed them. Then he will obtain whatever he asks. Mm -hmm. And the Lord applies this principle to our prayer life. Mm -hmm. It's not that God is asleep, because God is not asleep. That's this right. is just an example. So we'll understand that we need to bother God and we need to go there and say God please God please yes Lord I need it Lord 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 and everybody's annoyed <laughs> but guess what the Lord will move That's on right. your behalf right. and will give you whatever you ask so knock 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 ask 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 Believe, believe, yeah. believe, and you will receive whatever you ask. What are you asking to the Lord today? Amen. Some of you have tough requests regarding your, your health. Some of you need miracles. Mm -hmm. You need that eye completely healed. You need these miracles from the Lord, and the Lord is willing to give, it, give Amen. them to you. Amen. 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 Just this week I was meeting with one of my friends, a power, powerful man of God, an evangelist. And uh, through circumstances of life, uh, he is uh, now... Uh, in a secular uh, position and he's very good at what he does he he manages uh, fortunes for people that's a, a good job right <laughs> he's very good at what he does and I was talking to him and and he remind, reminded me that uh, two years ago he came to the church that I was pastoring and uh, he had his uh, uh, little child and he came forward for prayer and the doctors couldn't do anything for his child a birth deficiency in his ear and something very severe that caused uh, a lot of infections lack of balance all sorts of things and i just believed in the lord Amen. and as, a, as a, we laid hands on that child that baby the lord instantly healed the child and the, and i i had no notice from the lord the lord didn't say i did it no but i know he did and i believe it and i continue to pray for that child and then the next week, he, he calls me and says, what a miracle, what a miracle. 
the doctor said it's completely healed. And now, almost two years later, he said, it never came back. Because the Lord, whatever the Lord does, He does it perfectly. Now, listen to me. He prayed. He's a powerful man of God. His wife prayed. Everybody prayed. Why did it have to happen in a service? Why did it have to happen after they prayed and fasted so much for their child? Because sometimes we knock and we knock and we knock and we knock three times, four times, 15 times, 16 times, 20 times, 100 times. But at 101, yes. the Lord listens. <laughs> and it happens that the Lord listened to that knock. You, you see what I'm saying? Yes. So don't despair. I had people, you know, coming to me and I pray for them. And they say, oh, you know, Penny, he already prayed for me. And I went to a <laughs> service here and nothing happened. But, you know, I'm here anyways. So what kind of attitude is that? <laughs> what kind of, you know, what kind of attitude? Amen. You know, of course there's an anointing in certain people for healing. That's I right. believe the Lord anointed me to bring healing That's and right. to bring prophetic uh, uh, utterances and, and to bring the, uh, dream interpretation. Yeah. I know the Lord called me for that, but sometimes I pray nothing happens. Sometimes, you know, it's it, because it's not the person. That's right. But it, that's the right moment. And certain times you need your faith to be steered. Ask and keep on asking. Prayer is not asking, but it's knocking until the door That's is right. open. That's right. Amen? Amen? Knock until the door is open. Yeah. I don't know if you have children at, at home. Some, uh, sometimes it happens, you know, it happened to me yesterday. I had my son taking a shower. And, uh, you know, five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes. I said, man, I need to, to go there. So I start knocking. I said, yeah, so, uh, are you done? Almost done. And I kept knocking and knocking, come on, come on, come on. And it's not that he didn't want to, you know, to take the shower, but because I bothered him so much, he just came and opened the door. <laughs> God is not taking a shower. God is not asleep. God is not busy with, with stuff that is more important than, than your life because there's nothing more important for the Lord than you. In what regards a relationship with the Lord, you need to love Him. And guess what? When you love Him with unconditional love, He will stop everything and He will come and help you. Amen? Amen? And I want to give you just a few examples before we pray this morning. Some examples of, of, uh, of uh, taking spiritual truth and, uh, by force. Now, let's see forceful healing for a friend. And in Ma Mark chapter 2, verses 1 to 4, it says that Jesus entered in, into Capernaum and uh, some days, and it was noised that he was in the house. I like this expression, it was noised. I, I love that. And, and uh, straight away, many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached uh, the word unto them. It's like the church here today. That, now it's silent. <laughs> because you know that's not true. <laughs> but this is what church should be. That's right. Church should be in such a way, the anointing of God must be in churches right. in such a way that people are waiting at the door because right. the building is not big enough. Right. Right. Amen. Right. And, and praise God, God allowed me to, to see so many times situations like this during my lifetime and I'm longing to see that happening here in Quebec. Right. Amen. I've seen this happening in Europe. I've seen this happening in Eastern Europe. I've seen in South America. I've seen in Africa. The church is so packed yes. that people are waiting and we say okay we'll do a second session we'll do another service after isn't that great right. <laughs> i was visiting this friend in, in brazil he does seven services wow. seven services every sunday seven services and he's not a young man and those seven services are always packed the and the team of people just rushes everybody out so the next ones can come in and he goes upstairs to a little room and, and there's a, an old lady that cooks for him. <laughs> and he's sitting there, very humble man, and she prepares those meals and he relaxes a little bit. Then he comes down, you know, right after the present worship and he ministers in the power of the Holy Spirit. God does miracles everywhere. 
praise God. And then here he goes again. And, and I was there with my wife, and uh, he was a bit older than me. And I was thinking, man, he's, he's strong. He's powerful. <laughs> what an energy. You know, every single Sunday doing seven services. Wow. <laughs> what a thing. And why is that? Because the violent take it by force. When you love the Lord, when you have a call from God, you do anything. Here's the church. The church is full. And look at this. Verse 3, and some people came unto him, bringing one of the sick with palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come uh, nigh unto him for the, pre uh, the, the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let, it, let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Wow, look at that. I would love to see that happening here. I like to see that beautiful ceiling being destroyed <laughs> and someone just yes. lowering a bed <laughs> wow that that will be awesome maybe not a bed but the, you know we have s someone here that knows about portable <laughs> portable uh, kind of <laughs> can you imagine that you have a friend you you park the ambulance there <laughs> and you come and say we cannot get in no problem, we open a, a, a hole in the roof, and here's the man. And guess what? Jesus stopped his message. That's right. Well, he had to. He had no choice. He had no choice. He stopped the message. He said, what, what is going on? And everybody was looking, and they were curious to see what will happen. And after the sin of that man was forgiven by Jesus. A supernatural miracle happened, and that man was completely right. healed. But guess what? Four friends had to come in and take it by force. Right. They could have arrived and said, wow, this is so full. We should have gone to Ticketmaster and put <laughs> things in advance. You know, if it was like today that I have, you know, the tickets on my iPhone, I, I would say, oh, I should have bought the tickets on my iPhone. You know, how c c can we get in? You know, this, this place is completely you know it's impossible to get near Jesus how can we pass through the crowd you see the violent take it by force this is the kind of violence that I'm talking about it's not violence against people or fighting against people you know the, the unfortunately the violence that we see in churches today it's people fighting with one another when we should be using our strength and our energy to, to love the Lord to give our lives to the Lord and to do what's right Amen. Hallelujah. Now, thank God you didn't have to force your way in here today, but God is here to heal you and transform your life. A second example, calming the storm by force. And uh, you, you see the, the, the passage over there. Jesus said to the disciples, let's go to the other side. And they enter into a boat. And uh, there's a, 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 a huge storm that, that happened. And then on verse 38, uh, Mark 4, it says, Jesus was in the, the, the stern sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him up and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? What, what an answer. <laughs> I, I guess Jesus was in the boat with them. They were not concerned if Jesus was going to drown. They were concerned just about themselves. Yeah? They could woke him up and say, Jesus, we're all going to drown. But no, they said, we're going to drown. Look at that. Selfish people. Selfish people. And he got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. Praise the Lord. Wow. That's authority. And actually, the word says, when it says rebuked, he spoke with violence. He said, quiet down. He could have said that to the guys that woke him up. <laughs> I don't know if it ever happened. You're asleep and somebody comes, wakes you up. You look at the, uh, at the time and you have a, still a, one hour to sleep and you're upset. And say, why are you wake me, waking me up? Well, after this, he rebuked them, the disciples. Okay? <laughs> I'm glad he didn't say it. Be quiet, because they will never speak again in their lives. <laughs> Certain times, we're so selfish. No, Jesus is also in the boat of our life. 
When you have a storm, Jesus is there with you. So instead of saying, Jesus, you know, I'm going to drown. Jesus is in the boat with you. You better say, Jesus, we're going to drown together. <laughs> Help me, Lord. But, but you see, this is another situation of receiving a blessing by force. And the last one, before we pray, uh, um, getting your healing by force. And it says on Mark 5, a large crowd followed and pressed around him. And the woman was there. He had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. You know the story of this woman. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors. And had spent all she had. Instead of getting better, she grew worse. I had this experience with doctors. You know, certain times we suffer infirmity. This woman suffered infirmity. But the Bible says she suffered with doctors. Praise God for doctors. But sometimes we suffered with them. And on verse 27, it says, When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. Because she thought, and she said, If I just touch his clothes, I'd be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt her body that she was free from suffering. And, and uh, the, the, this passage is preached so many times in church. And we know she had to press through the crowd. She had to press and there were uh, certain circumstances, I'm not going to go into detail, but according to the, to the Old Testament, when a woman had a bleeding, uh, a menstrual period or a bleeding, she had the period for 12 years. That's a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And uh, you ladies can relate with this better than me, you know, because I cannot understand what that is. But some of you that suffer for a few days, imagine instead of a few days, you're suffering 12 years. That's a lot of time. And uh, according to the law, they couldn't touch anyone. Anyone who touched that woman will be uh, um, ritually unclean. So, so uh, if a man touched her or, or if she touched the man, that man had to go to the priest and they had to do some rituals and some sacrifices in order to bring purification. So she was bold enough not only to press through the crowd, but to touch the high priest. Praise the Lord. <laughs> And when she did so, virtue, power, just touched her. And immediately she was healed. But you see, she was violent enough to come out of her house and come to Jesus. That's right. Now, I want to encourage you today to come to Jesus. Mm -hmm. To do also an act of spiritual violence. And you need to renew your passion. You need to be passionate for the Lord. Because if you're not passionate, you will not have that, that, uh, that stream of spiritual violence in you. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of Christians that are cold? Yeah. Do you know any? Mm -hmm. What about lukewarm? Mm -hmm. hmm? they, 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 they're not cold, they're not on, on fire. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Lukewarm is worse than cold. That's right. Because when you're cold, Jesus is right there to give you a hand. When you're lukewarm, mm -hmm. it causes nausea to the Lord. That's right. Vomit. Mm -hmm. it's, it's what the Bible says. So there's nothing worse than lukewarm Christians. Mm -hmm. There's nothing worse than the lukewarm prayers. When, when, when I go to a prayer meeting and sometimes I have to go and, and I, I like to be with other men of God and I go to, I don't want to refer to denominations, but let's say Anglicans, Catholics, you know, uh, Presbyterians, you know, some more traditional denominations. And sometimes they invite me for a prayer meeting and they say, oh, I say, oh my God, I should have stayed home. Yeah. Have you ever had the feeling mm -hmm. you go to a, 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 a place where there's prayers being offered and you say, man, I should have stayed home. You know, when I go on vacation, I always try to find a church. And sometimes I find the wrong church. <laughs> I can still pray to the Lord. And I pray for those people. And say, Lord, just set a spiritual fire in here. <laughs> Bring fire, Lord. <laughs> we need to renew our passion for the Lord. You know, I don't know what is your spiritual condition. But maybe you prayed so, so, so much for a certain issue that you gave up. Maybe it came to a point you said, I give up. And you know when you give up? It's when your passion, when your love for the Lord is getting colder. Right. So renew your passion. Today, the, 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 this message can radically change your life. That's right.
This can change your life. Because it's not about going to places. I love going to conferences and, and to listen to prophets and to mighty men of God. I, I love going because I love the Word of God. That's right. You know, I love the Word of God, so I enjoy going. Certain people go to those places just because they want to receive something. And I'm not saying it's wrong. You should be able to receive something. But the question is, what do you have to give to the Lord? Can you give Him your life? That's what He ask, is asking. Mm -hmm. No, of course. You, you, there's other things we give. We give our money. We do this. We help, help children. We help uh, uh, the poor. We help all kinds of people. Mm -hmm. But we don't give our life to the children right. or to the people. We give our life to the Lord. Amen. Then He will ask us what to do. You know, uh, the gospel message can set you free Amen. of those things that are separating you from the Lord. Right. Yes, you might come to the Lord through your needs and you're being selfish and you just want this. And, and you know, this is why certain people are asking uh, just money to the Lord. Lord, give me money for this. Give me money for that. The Lord can give you money. But he has something more valuable right. than gold. That's he right. has something more valuable than silver. This is why when the disciples entered the temple right after Pentecost, they said to, the, to, a, to a, a man that was there, a beggar, they said, silver and gold, we have not. Right. But what we have, we give unto you. And I'm sure he was much better with the miracle that he received rather than with a tip with right. something that he would receive. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. I like to bless people. I like to give tips. You, you know, I'm so used to give tips in Quebec. I go to Tim Hortons in Ontario and I, I, I give them a, a quarter and they look at me and, and they, you know, they don't know what I'm doing because they're not used to get a tip. They're not used to, to get a tip. And, and sometimes I go to play, people say, oh, don't, don't give a tip. It's okay. It's already clear. I want to give. I want to give. If I go to a restaurant I'm well served, I give a better tip. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not tipping the Lord. I love the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I obey the Lord. But we're not here in church and you didn't come here to receive just crumbs. You didn't come here to receive just, you know, a, a little thing. You, can't, you came here because God wants to change your life. Amen. And He wants to change your life for the better. Jesus wants to set you free from drug, sexual addictions, substance abuse, spousal abuse, other forms of abuse. You don't need to live under that abuse. And guess what? When you give your life to the Lord, he, now He's your protector. Right. Nobody can Amen. touch you. Nobody can lay a finger on you. Right. Because when they touch you, they're touching That's Him. Right. So if you've been under abuse, if you've been under terrible circumstances, you don't know what to do. Guess what? Jesus is here. You. You're, not, you're not using your spiritual, your violence against people, but you use spiritual violence to come to the Lord. Right. And to say, Lord, here am I. And remember, uh, I'm going to finish right now. From the days of John the Baptist mm -hmm. until now, and until now is today. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence. Guess who is in the kingdom? We are in the kingdom. And then it says, and the violent take it by force. Mm -hmm. Now I, I want to challenge you to become one of these. The violent. And the violent, it's not using violence against people. It's not uh, verbal violence. See if you understand what is the message today. Because certain times people get it all wrong. That's right. I remember when I started to serve the Lord and I served under an evangelist, very powerful man of God. And we were in this big arena, big venue. And I, I was responsible for present worship and I was giving my testimony because the Lord delivered me uh, from drugs. It was a huge miracle. He healed me. And so I gave my testimony. He preached and he preached the message <laughs> where it says that you need to deny yourself. You need to die for yourself in order to receive the Lord. And the next day on the front page of a newspaper, they put cult leader incites crowd to commit suicide. Aww. They got it all wrong. They got it all wrong. Of course, this created the problem to the journalists. 
But you see, some certain times people twist what you That's say. Right. People don't understand what you say. That's right. And he was just preaching the Bible, saying, you know, you need to deny yourself, die for yourself to receive the new life that God has for you. Mm -hmm. But you know, people were talking about, you know, those uh, um, cults on, yes. uh, on other news, and it came, you know, right uh, close to one of those uh, suicide uh, uh, cults uh, did, did their act and they identified him wrongly. So people can even misunderstand what you're saying. What I'm telling you today, it's not to become a violent person. But, but see if you understand, right. in the spirit, you need to be so passionate yes. for the Lord Amen. that you're willing to do anything, yes. not just for you, but on behalf of others. That's right. Not just a selfish thing, but if you need to lower your friends through the roof, you need to be willing to do crazy stuff. That's right. You know, that, that's, that, that's, that's a forceful entry. That's right. You know, you can go to jail if, if you do a, something like that. You can be sued, but you don't care because you're more, you're interested in the welfare of your friends. You need to be like that woman that forced her way in, yes. even against her own religion. And he, she touched the that's high right. priest and she received virtue the, Lord. the violent take it by force Amen. maybe you've been sitting down for a long time and you've never seen an opportunity to take things by force maybe you feel too weak to do so let me tell you god is calling people that's right that worship him in spirit Amen. and in truth I believe you're here today for a reason. You're not here today just to listen to a man that came to preach on a Sunday morning. You came here because the Lord had this message prepared just for you. Don't give up. Praise Don't Lord. give up. Just take it by force. Let us all stand. And, uh, and once again, today, we're just going to, I'm going to have a word of prayer. And then we're going to open the altar. And we have, we have here many men and women of God. We have prayer warriors. And we're going to pray for one another. We prayed for those requests. Now we're going to, to put our stamp and say, Lord, here it is. We're going to send it to you. We're going to seal those requests. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So think about those things we, you've been praying for, those, those uh, requests, you know, for, for that fiancé to be saved for the healing of that eye. You know, all these things right. that you've been asking. And maybe people are saying, oh, you know, you should you know, do things the other way, wait for him to get saved, and then you, you'd make your decision. Listen, your life is your life. That's right. We all have choices, and we trust the Lord. We trust the Lord. I, I will never forget when I was serving the Lord in Teen Challenge, a, a, a very powerful man, a, a strong, an evangelist. He had AIDS. HIV and he was a teen challenge and he was visiting people in the hospital that had AIDS and evangelizing and this man met this this woman at the hospital and she was about to die with AIDS now this man was a teen challenge director in the south of France in Nice that's that's uh, the Côte d'Azur in France and and he went there several times he got in love with that with that woman and he prayed for her to be saved. And finally, he was able to convince her that she needed Jesus. She came to the Lord. They got married. Everybody called him crazy because he was about to die. He had the virus, but uh, it was kind of dormant. But everybody told him, you're crazy, you're crazy. But the Lord sealed that union. And guess what happened? Both were completely healed. Amen. Both were completely healed. Complete remission. Doctors couldn't find any answer. It's one of those cases where they have no answers. That's right. They got married. They have beautiful children. They still serve the Lord there in France. Their testimony impacted thousands of lives. Because they decided to trust in the Lord. Amen. I don't know your condition. I don't know what you're going through, but the Lord knows. Yes, and if He's able to heal people of cancer, of AIDS, of all these things, the Lord is able to heal your body too. Right. Amen. 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 And today Amen. we're going to seal it. Amen. And I'm just asking you something very simple. That from deep within your heart, if you've been a lukewarm Christian, or if you've been cold, you're disappointed. Listen, we can be, I, I, I honestly, many times I'm disappointed with people, with churches. With, I'm so disappointed sometimes. 
but I will never let my disappoint disappointment to let me cool down right. in my love for the Lord. Right. Amen? Amen. <laughs> you know, when you're disappointed, react yes. and react yes. and do something and run for the Lord and commit to the Lord. So let us just bow our heads. And if there's someone here today that you want to recommit your life to the Lord, just say, Lord, just forgive me because I've been lukewarm. Lord, forgive me. I've been far away from you. You know, just there where you are. I don't want, I, I'm not going to call you here to the front. But right there where you are, you know, just lift up your hand and just lower it. Because I want to pray for you. This is a special moment. So if you want to, to, to say, Lord, I want to re rededicate my life to you. I want to give you my heart once again. You know, just lift up your hand and lower it. Okay, I'm, I'm seeing a, a few of you. All right, so let, let's have a, a word of prayer.